the organs which are producing secretion as they are producing the secretion they are having the secretive cell all right the secretion secreted by the gland can be the enzyme hormones or maybe the serotonin as in the previous class the last night i don't to close the gate in the class of epithelium i have told you that epithelium can invaginate inside the connective tissue so the epithelium which invaginates in the connective tissue is forming the gland so development of the gland whatever the type of gland it is developed from invagination of epithelium surface epithelium into the connective tissue that is forming the gland another part hurry up i am surprised that you will understand the story part i had told you previously that if you are late enter in the class silently and sit down and why are you waiting see the development of the gland you can see this is the surface epithelium this is invagination of the surface epithelium it is invaginated into the surface epithelium invaginate into the connective tissue and forming the gland now the another part the distal part of the invagination that is this one the distal part of the invagination that is forming the secretive entity look this one and the proximal part of invagination that is this one is forming the excretory duct that is the way how the glands are developed that invagination of surface epithelium the distal part of invagination surface epithelium is forming the secretive cell which is also named as secretive entity and the proximal part of it is forming the duct that is called excretory duct all right the secretory cells of the gland it can be of different shape the shape of secretory cells can be flat shape as you can see here and the flat shape cells of secretory cells are also named as epinar is also called epinar or it can be tubular in shape <coughs> the secretive entities can be the flat shape which is called epinar and it can be tubular <coughs> that is called tubular after seeing this development we classify the gland the classification of the gland on different way first of all here in this diagram you can see the secretive and secretive and excretive and see the lower one in some plants after their formation they detach from the surface epithelium they detach from the surface epithelium as you can see the gland is formed but it is not now connecting with the surface epithelium such type of glands are called exocrine glands so exocrine glands are ductless glands the secretion of the glands is either released at on the surface the secretion which are released on the surface epithelium they are through the ducts the example of this exocrine gland So exocrine glands they discharge their secretion on the surface epithelium 
by means of ducts. While the endocrine glands, they discharge their secretion in the blood stream directly. So they are called the endocrine glands. The third type of the gland is paracrine gland. In paracrine glands, they discharge their secretion in the extracellular space surrounding the gland, neither directly into the bloodstream nor to the surface epithelium. Rather, they are discharging their secretion in the extracellular space surrounding the gland. And these secretions, they are acting over the cells which are surrounding the gland. Such type of glands, example, are the part of the drift of liver cone intestinal gland. All right. Now let's see what is the type of mode of secretion. On this basis, we divide the gland. As I have told you, some glands which are discharging their secretion on the surface epithelium through the duct, these are called endocrine glands. Sorry, endocrine glands and the glands which are discharging their secretion directly into the bloodstream are the endocrine glands. And the third type of gland is paracrine gland. Then second type of classification of the gland on the basis of their cells. That how many number of cells are present in the gland. There is one gland in the body only one gland which is having the single cell and the example of it is now listen if you are late and stand there, I will mark your face. The unicellular glands, they are the goblet cells which are secreting their secretion mucus and having the single cell. Other glands, all are the multicellular glands, whatever the type, endocrine or exocrine, all are the multicellular glands. Only unicellular glands is only the one. On the basis of ducts, that how many ducts are present in the gland? And what is the shape of and piece of the stuff? On this basis, we classify the glands into simple glands and compound glands. See here. The simple gland is having the one duct. Understand? The simple glands are having only the one duct. Exquisite duct is only one. And the simple gland which is having the single duct, the shape of the duct can be tubular or it can be a thinar. The other compound that I will show you, another thing, the compound gland having the multiple number of the ducts. The ducts can be minor ducts, ducts can be major ducts. So, on this basis, we classify the glands on number of the ducts and shape of the excretory ducts. They can be classified into simple glands and compound glands. The simple gland, which is having their single duct, the shape of duct can be different. It can be tubular or it can be a synapse, but number is single. So see the example, the tubular gland. The tubular gland, best example is intestinal crypt, where you find only the single 
tubular glands. Just like this. This instead of single gland, this, this can be the branch. The shape is tubular, but this can be branch more than one or two. Such type of the glands are present in the part of fundus and pyloric part of the stomach and also in the uterine glands and also in the uterine glands and see this one the gland is coiled gland is coiled not straight and the example of coiled tubular glands is the part of the sweat glands the sweat glands may be present in the axilla or genitalia where but the shape of the gland is coiled tubular shape. See the another one. See the shape of the it is a synapse or plus shape. And branch SNR gland is present in the urethral glands. And the branch SNR gland is present in sebaceous gland and tarsal gland. Now look this. Way. This is the compound. The compound glands again can be tubular, SNR, or one type of gland which is having the both tubular as well as SNR. Yes, girl. What is problem to you? So you are talking to your own? You know that things are not normal. Don't give me this chance again. Now look the compound tubular branch. Look here. There is the one large duct in which the small ducts are opening. So small ducts are called the minor duct and large duct is major duct. Here you can see the large number of the branch tubular glands. Why it is called compound? Because it is having two types of ducts, minor ducts and major ducts. Minor ducts and major ducts. All the minor ducts twine and open into the major duct. And major duct opens outside. The second one, the shape of the ducts are here. What shape? See the second diagram and see the shape of duct. What is shape? I don't want shaking your head. That's in art. This is shape of the secretive end piece. It is an SNR or not? This is tubular and this is SNR. It is named as compound SNR gland. In compound SNR glands, the both type of ducts are present, minor ducts and all these minor ducts are opening into the major duct. So it is called compound and on the basis of shape of the secretive end piece, it is called SNR. The example of it is the part of the parotid gland is the best example of compound SNR gland. So when it is asked to you what is the type of gland in the parotid gland, you will see the slide of parotid gland. That is compound SNR gland. See the third one. Here you will see the both type of gland ducts are seen. Some ducts are SNR, some are tubular in shape. It can be this as compound tubulo SNR gland, compound tubulo SNR gland. The example of it is both sublingual and submandibular gland. Sublingual and submandibular gland, which is having the both type of ducts. Then we classify the glands on the basis of 
type of secretion. The glands which are secreting the serous secretion. Serous secretions are watery secretions, thin watery secretions. The example of thin watery secretion gland or the serous gland, best example is parotid gland. Parotid gland is purely serous gland. Parotid gland is purely serous gland. Then second type of the gland, which are secreting the secretion, which is thick viscous, thick viscous secretion is all the mucus secretion. The mucus secretion gland is sublingual gland, but here you write out it is not purely mucus gland, it is a mixed gland, but it is predominant in mucus secretion. Try to understand. I will talk the another mixed gland. That is submandibular gland. But the sublingual gland, which is no doubt mixed gland, but it is predominant in mucus secretion. So you have to use the word, it is predominant in mucus secretion. In submandibular, that is predominant in serous, but it is not uh, compared. We don't give this example in serous gland because. It is secreting the both type of secretion, serous as well as mucus. So we name this as mixed gland. So mixed glands are two. One is the sublingual, another is submandibular. The sublingual gland is predominant mucus secreting gland, while the submandibular, which is also the mixed gland, but it is predominant on serous. At the same time, because we have to differentiate which is the serous gland, which is the mucus gland. So while seeing under the microscope, you will see these two, this type of picture. Look here. In serous gland, the serous gland, the cells lining the glands are pyramidal in shape. The cells are pyramidal in shape. And the lumen is small. As the cells are pyramidal in shape, the lumen is small. Another thing, see the nucleus. Nucleus is centrally present, oval or rounded nucleus which are present centrally. Another thing you are seeing in each SNI, you are seeing the dotted dotted structures. These are the gymogen granules. These are the gymogen granules. So all the serous SNI or the serous gland, when you will see the parotid gland, you will see such type of the SNI, large number of the such type of SNI. So the examiner will ask you, what is the shape of the SNS? Each SNS is lined by pyramidal cell, okay? And the nucleus are situated in the center. And Close to the lumen, the cells are having the gymogen value. All right. Another point, if you see the diagram clearly, in some exocrine glands, what are the exocrine glands? Which are discharging the secretion to the surface of epithelium. Example of it is the parotid gland sublingual gland, submandibular gland, okay. So, in most of the exocrine glands, lining on the surface of SNI, look this one, lining on the surface of their SNI, there is present star-shaped cell, flattened cell, star-shaped flattened cell, the nucleus is also flattened. These cells, are called, they are contractile in nature. The purpose of these cells, as they are contractile in nature, on their contraction, 
they help in releasing the secretion these cells are called myoepithelial cells myoepithelial cells so myoepithelial cells are star shaped flattened cells present on the periphery of some exocrine gland and the cell is present between the walls of the cell on one side the cell wall another side is basement membrane wapas samajh lijiye some exocrine glands or you can say the most of the exocrine glands on their periphery the star shaped cell is present this star shaped cell is contractile in nature as they are contractile in nature so and where, where they are present on the periphery so when they will contract they help in releasing the secretion and these cells are called myoepithelial cells myoepithelial cells or also named as gyanosi okay you just remember the myoepithelial cells not more see the shape of mucus acini in mucus acini you will see the cells are just type of cuboidal they are cuboidal type of cells the lumen is wider or not see the lumen of serous and mucus the lumen is wider the cell the nucleus of the cell are flattened and they are pushing towards basement membrane the reason is the lumen is filled up with the mucus and that mucus is pushing the nuclei towards the basement membrane and again you are seeing here the large number of the granules these are the mucinogen granules mucinogen granules look here the thick viscous mucus secretions are thick viscous they are mucinogen having the mucinogen granules and nuclei are the flat on the periphery large the purpose of it is it is helpful in the protection and lubrication of the surrounding then the another thing you will find the large number of the ducts in the glands whatever the type of glands in exocrine glands you will find not in endocrine why right? endocrine glands are ductless glands so you will see the ducts different type of the ducts in the exocrine glands the ducts can be present inside the acini that can be present inside the acinus that is called intralobular duct the duct can be present between the two acinus and what is present within the two acinus connective tissue so the duct which is present between the two acinus that is called intralobular duct all right intralobular duct join with the excretory duct which is opening outside so three type of ducts are present in the gland inter globular duct or you can name also the intercalated duct which is inside the acini another is inter globular duct which is present between the two acini and the inter globular ducts are joined to the forming the major excretory duct these ducts the inter skeletal ducts they are lined by the cuboidal cells interlobular ducts are lined by the striated columnar ducts or striated cuboidal epithelium then the major excretory ducts where you can find again either the striated 
Duberdal or Stratted columnar. C. Intercalated duct or intralobular duct. They are lined by the Duberdal epithelium and stratted duct. They are present in the part of intralobular duct and interlobular ducts are joined to form in the SPG duct. So these are the various types of the ducts seen in the exocrine gland. Now look the diagram. When we focus the gland in the microscope, you will see such type of the picture. All these are the acinides. Okay? And look, this is the this is the one lobule, this is another lobule, this is another lobule. Between the lobules, you are seeing the connective tissue mass. In the connective tissue mass, you will see the blood vessels and also the ducts. In each acinite, again you will see the ducts. Look here, this is the duct. These are the acinites. And the duct which is present inside the acinus is called intercalated ducts or inter intralobular duct. And look here, this duct is present between the, this lobe and this lobe. So what it will call interlobular duct. How you identify the slide? See the slide. You will find the large number of the acinites. Now our next point is to differentiate whether acinites are mucus secreting or sugar secreting. Or the lobe is having both type of acinite. For that, for that, what we will do? We will look the shape of the acinus cells. If the shape of acinus cells are pyramidal and the lumen of the cell wall is less, nuclei are present centrally and they are taking the, the dark stain. I am using the word, they are taking the dark stain. That means the staining is very nice compared to the mucus acinite. So if you find these features, the pyramidal cells in the acinus, nuclei are rounded or oval, centrally present. Lumen of the acinus is narrow and staining of the SNI are good, dark, and give the chance to see the SNI. If the gland is having only the serous SNI, then your diagnosis will be the gland of parotid gland. Understand? So that is the way how we identify the slide. The example of serous acinite is parotid gland. And it is having only the serous acinite, so we can't say it as a mixed gland. And duct, we must know. The duct inside the lobe, intralobular duct, intralobular duct is lined by tuberdal epithelial cells. Or intralobular duct, which is present between the two lobes, like this, they are lined by the stated columnar or stated tuberdal. And all these ducts, which is not seen here, they are joined together and open into the major duct. So this is the way how we identify the slide. So this is the slide of purely serous gland. Example is parotid gland. Now look this one. See the lumen of the acinite. They are tubercle cells and the lumen is wider, staining the nucleus of the cells are close to the basement membrane. Let's see. Is there enough food? The nuclei are flattened and close to the basement membrane. The lumen is wider. And the staining of SNI is light. They are lightly stained. Serious SNI are darkly stained. Mucus and I are lightly 
All right. We have seen the mucus actinides. Any more actinides seen here? Take your thumb. This is the mucus. Clear? And look here. Serous. So, the gland is a mixed gland. Having the both types of actinides. Serous as well as mucus. So, gland is mixed. Now, another point left. All right, mixed gland. You are right. This type of mixed gland. This type of mixed gland, whether sublingual or submandibular. Why you are saying the submandibular? Because it is written on the board. <laughs> yes, reply me. Why you are saying the submandibular? Serious demilunes are more. Serous SNI are more in number, so it is called submandibular gland. Next gland, so how you will reply? The slide is of next gland. Reply like that. Give the chance to examiner to ask the question. Aap khud itna bol dhe to ke examiner aake question hi puchta hai. No. Right? Reply point to point. Sir, it is next gland. Then the examiner will ask you which type of next gland? And reply, it is a submandibular gland. So your answer should be like this. But you are doing opposite to this. Most of the students, I am not saying you. Most of the students, the part which they know better, they start and not without a stoppage, continue. Don't develop this idea. Now another point which I want to tell you, see this duct, this type of duct, reply, between the lobules, so interlobular duct, it is interlobular duct, the epithelium lining the interlobular duct can be striated, columnar epithelium or striated tuba duct, without seeing. We can't say that whether it is started columnar or started tuber. See this gland. See it carefully. It is mucus. And just at its periphery, what type of cells are you are seeing here? Serous cell. This is very clearly visible. See this carefully. Or see this one. This is mucus acini. And on the periphery of the mucus acini, you are seeing the serous cell. This is called serous demilune of Gionuti. Not myopithelial cell. Don't confuse with this myopithelial cell. Serous demilune. It is called serous demilune. What is the serous demilune? I am telling you. On the periphery of the mucus acinus, on the periphery of the mucus acinus, the serous cells are present. The close. It is asked in the MCQ. What is serous demilune? On the periphery of mucus acinus, on the periphery of the mucus acinus, the serous cells are present. These are called serous demilune, D E double M I L U N E, demilune of Gianuzzi. Should I speak? G I double N U double Z I. Demilune of Gianuzzi. Gianuzzi. You must be clear about this. What is the Demilune of Gianuzzi? That is, on the periphery of mucosinite, the serous cells are present. 
that is called demiune of Giannotti. You can see very clearly here. This is the mucus acinite. They call diagram, they call better. This is the mucus acinite, and on the periphery of it is, these are the serous cells. So these are called serous demiune or demiune of Giannotti. Which name you can remember very well, serous demiune. So what is the serous demiune? That is the serous cells which are present on the periphery of mucus acinite, that is called and they are seen only in the mixed gland. Don't try to see this in parotid gland. So, why I am telling you that it is not seen in parotid gland? Parotid gland is purely serous gland. Okay, so don't speak in parotid gland, serous demilu. Clear this thing. They are seen in the mixed gland, maybe the sublingual or submandibular. And this is very clearly you can see here. The trapo, what is this? What is this acinus? It's not time to look at on your. That means it is not clear. This is serous. And this is mucus as well as demilune. And this is purely mucus. And another thing, see at the periphery of the mucus acini, you are seeing the myoepithelial cells. Skin color diagram, these are the myoepithelial cells. See this blank. What type of acini you are seeing here? which is predominant mucus acini. So this is sublingual gland. Again, you can see here the myopithelial cells. And see the duct. This is intercalated duct present inside the acini. And this is the interlobular duct. What is this acinus? Serous. See the staining dark while the mucus acini are lightly stained. This diagram is very important. That is, you can understand what you will see, what type of the mucus acini will be seen, and what is the myopithelial cell. And these are the different type of the ducts. So, in the next practical class, I will show you the Glands. The endocrine glands, they are ductless glands. That we will take the separate class, including all the suprarenal glands, thyroid glands, and like that. But I will show you the endocrine glands. And in the glands, you will see the mucus acini, serous acini clearly and the different type of the duct. So revise the story part. And one thing I told you that in the practical class, complete your histology record. I am giving you only the one week time, after which you will get your attendance only after showing your record. And whenever the question asked to you, describe the micro anatomy. Yes, madam. I am giving you time to detect you after Get up. 
Yes. Out. I say get out. Once I told you, I am not talking other things. I am talking of the story part. And still you can't control yourself. What's your own number? क्यों नहीं समझ में आता आप लोग क्लास के अंदर समझने के लिए एक आई डोंट थिंक दैट एनी वन ऑफ यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड द थिंग बाय रीडिंग द बुक बिकॉज वी आर टेलिंग यू मेनी बुक्स एंड नन ऑफ यू कैन रीड लार्ज नंबर ऑफ द बुक्स फॉर वन सब्जेक्ट तो be serious in the class and understand each and everything after attending the class go through the book if still some problem to you you can rule out that problem don't take any problem in your mind then you can become a good doctor as yesterday in gross dissection hall i have asked you cp angle none of you replied me what is the cp angle cost of any kangal when you are reading the lung the costal surface of the lung and the diaphragmatic surface in the lower part there is a space costo diaphragmatic space when the and this is pointed downward that is called cp angle the importance of this angle the person suffering from any disease or maybe any infection the first collection diffusion of the fluid is collected here because of its gravity and when the fluid is collected there the person is feeling problem in respiration and he will come to doctor after taking the scanogram the doctor seen that the fluid is there they express the fluid so that is very important costo sanic gangal and another thing which is important in the lung and pleura nerve supply you should be very clear about its nerve supply okay tell me the nerve supply of the diaphragmatic pleura yes while speaking this keep this thing in your mind peripheral part of the diaphragmatic pleura is supplied by intercostal nerve central part is from phrenic nerve medial side of the diaphragm the medial side of the lung that is very important so whatever the things you read whether in the gross or histology see that part and discuss rather discussing the other matter i don't think that the matter is of movies and this none of the movies is like that to discuss so better you discuss that class because it is very difficult to pass 2 hours in the dissection hall definitely you will talk but you should talk like that the teacher should not affect it or see i am not saying that keep silent but don't give the chance to us or don't find it yourself that we should make you out discuss kariye and identification in the part in the dissection hall should be very important as you have already noticed that in the first part completion test none of you got the 10 marks i don't think that any one of you get 9 or 8 number out of 10 so see your condition and sporting will be helpful to students in university exam also see your batch senior batch the exam will start from 28 onwards before the bybasi we will keep the sport and you should be so perfect that out of 10 you got the 10 mark and that will be only possible 
then you see the part thoroughly and discuss its relation i am not saying that discuss among the see the books also and revise so develop this habit i hope now you people will go through i had told the teachers also go and ask that student because i am very unhappy by seeing the tomorrow today yesterday performance of the student very deep don't develop this i want every should every student should pass out first candidate in first class Do I start next class? Connect with issue. The connective tissue. All right. What is the connective tissue? It is connect the various tissues of the body. Okay, as the name indicates, connect. It connect the other tissues. like epithelial tissue muscular tissue all that tissues are connected by connective tissue it is consisting of cell fiber and ground substance the three things are there the cells are of different type fibroblast fibrocytes like that the fibers may be the collagen fibers elastic fibers reticular fibers and the ground substance is consisting of glycose amino glycans water and other things so all these they are forming the connective tissue i will take the class and don't worry this connective tissue as this it is classified specialized connective tissue dense connective tissue the specialized connective tissue we will talk of the two and you will see the two slides of in the connective tissue one is of cartilage another is of bone then there will be the different type of cartilage hyaline cartilage elastic cartilage and fibro cartilage and bone again we will show you the two or three slides of the bone compact bone cancellous bone and also the developing bone that i will take after 23 or before that so meanwhile you revise the topic should i take attendance